Hello, welcome to a preview where we're going to talk about the brand new expansion for Card Hunter Attack of the Artifacts. Attack of the Artifacts is the first expansion for the game since we launched last year and uh, it contains a whole bunch of new stuff. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview in this video and then we're going to do some videos over the next few days where we're going to show you some of the content in a little bit more detail. So what does this expansion set contain? Well, for a start, there are six new adventures. Uh, these adventures are split into two groups. Uh, one of them is a level set of level seven, eight, and nine adventures. So they're around the middle of the campaign and they're pretty good to play through if maybe you got stuck halfway through the campaign, you need a little bit of a, a helping hand and you, or you just want to explore some new content. The Valley of Tezcal is the first one of these mid-level adventures and um, it's a, a new uh, adventure path which takes you through um, a, a mysterious valley which has appeared in, in the east of Cardhuntria and which is inhabited by all kinds of strange creatures including plant pygmies and animated trees. You can see a couple of them here on the module cover. Each one of these new adventures is a treasure hunt, which means, of course, that you win a guaranteed epic item if you manage to beat it. And uh, we'll take a look in more detail at Valley of Tezcal and the, what you win from it uh, in, in another one of these videos. If you've got further through the campaign, there are some much harder adventures for you to try at uh, level 18. And these kick off with the Troll Tyrant, you can see up here. Now, each one of these um, adventures unlocks more. As I said, there are six new adventures in total, three level seven, eight, nine, and uh, three uh, more uh. at level 18 plus. So here we are looking at the Troll Tyrant. Yeah. No. And uh, it um, features some classic fantasy monsters with a card hunter in interpretation of them. As well as that, the epic items you win from these high level adventures are these new artifacts that uh, the expansion is themed around. And for beating the Troll Tyrant, you will win this epic staff, Wall. And Wall has a whole bunch of cards that you might not have seen before. One of the more interesting things about these artifacts is they're intelligent weapons. And that means they tend to be uh, a little bit impetuous. So you can see, for example, this impetuous blast card here, which you have to take if you take this um, item in your loadout and uh, it's an attack card which is a trait it's the first time we've done that kind of card it's a it's a it's a quite a nice attack but you have to play it when you draw it which can sometimes be a little bit of a problem depending on timing anyway we'll um like i said we'll, we'll take a bit more of a look at those adventures in more detail as well as the new adventures of course there's a ton of new cards and items in the expansion set and uh, let's just have a, a quick look at some of those. Um, the, um, there's a new filter in the deck builder where you can uh, toggle to only see these new items. You can see a whole bunch of them here. If you want to get these new items, they will drop in the regular adventures and multiplayer. Uh, but you can also, there's a bunch of chests that we've created which um, are guaranteed to contain uh, at least one of the, at least one item from the new set. So there are, there, are, there are a bunch of different ways to get hold of them. Some of the more interesting uh, items I'll just take a look at now. Um, we've obviously tried to introduce a whole lot of new mechanics and new ways for you to get an advantage over your enemies, whether they're in, in the campaign or in multiplayer. And uh, I'll just um, take a look at a few of the new mechanics and, and talk quickly about why we might have introduced some of them. We try to address uh, some areas where we think um, the game is um, not very well supported in, in, the, in the original set. For example, uh, we think that elves are, uh, need, a, need a bit of love. They um, are our least played race in multiplayer and, and people struggle with them a bit in the campaign too. So let's just take a look at some of the new cards that we've added for elves. We've um, you know, tried to stay on theme with elves, which is that they are generally about movement and trickery and less about uh, having a lot of health or um, you know, being tanks. So one of the more powerful cards, I think, 
is this uh, new card, Elven Trickery, which is um, a movement card with the very special ability that if you end this move adjacent to an enemy, that enemy discards all melee attack cards. So in other words, if you're an elf, you can run up to your dwarven warrior opponent and force him to throw out his entire hand of attacks. And then, of course, you can just beat on him at your leisure. So that's a, an extremely powerful ability and something we think will be um, in very high demand. Um, there's, uh, there's, there are some other elf abilities mixed in here as well that you, that you might not have seen before, or that you definitely wouldn't have seen before. You haven't played the expansion on the test server. But um, let's, let's quickly have a look at, at, uh, at a few other things in this set. Um, one of the other areas that we think has been a little bit um, neglected is uh, in, in, in the wizard suite of cards. Wizards, of course, have access to a lot of different abilities, including terrain manipulation and pushing people around. But they also do damage. And there's quite a few uh, burning cards in the wizard suite which cause damage over time. And those are, tend to be a little bit neglected too. And one of the reasons is that burning, like this flame spit, for example, here, does a small amount of damage over several rounds. And of course, if your opponent's wearing armor, that can be a bit of a problem because they find it easy to shrug off small amounts of damage. So we've added this new hot flames trait, which uh, when, ensures that whenever your burning cards do damage, they penetrate any armor. So we think that that might have a good chance of getting burning to be a, a, more, um, a more useful ability. And finally, let's, uh, let's take a look at um, an interesting new ability which we've um, uh, provided for both um, for warriors, wizards, and priests. It's, it's, it's an interesting ability for both the campaign and for multiplayer, and it's we call it the punishing, the punishing ability. It's not a keyword, but the punishing strike, for example, is the warrior version of this card. And punishing basically is an ability that increases the amount of damage that you do based on how many cards your target's holding. Now, of course, that's interesting because some strategies are based around drawing lots of cards, and this is something that really punishes your opponent for being overly enthusiastic with stocking their hand with cards. So for example, Punishing Strike only does three base damage, but it adds two damage for every card in the target's hand. So if your opponent's kept two cards from last round, drawn three more, and then maybe stocked up on a couple more cards via uh, Inspiration or some other form of card drawing, they might have six or seven cards in their hand. And if you can let loose a punishing strike at the beginning of the of the uh, round, you're going to do maybe 15, 17 points of damage, which is incredible for a silver card like that. So we think punishing is an, an interesting ability. So as I said, there's a there's a lot of new items in the set. You can you can see a bunch of them here, um, and uh, we hope you have fun, you know, checking them out as you collect them, playing through the game. Like I said. The items are all available, um, you know, without paying a cent, just through playing through the regular single-player content or through the um, through multiplayer. As well as that, uh, as you might have seen when I was poking around in the chess shop before, there are a bunch of new figures in the game. So there's a complete set, one for each new race class combination. Here, for example, is the uh, Elf Warrior. There's also, um, of course, Dwarf Warrior, Human Warrior. They're all a um, got a kind of an Aztec theme to them. So, if you're interested in in that kind of look for your characters, that's we've introduced a whole bunch of uh, new looks that you can uh, apply in campaign or multiplayer. And speaking of multiplayer. One other very exciting feature that we're adding to the game is uh, multiplayer leagues. Multiplayer leagues are the first official multiplayer tournaments that we've added. And uh, I'm going to do another video where I show how a league works in some detail and Ben and I will play uh, a battle in the league. But basically leagues are organized competitions with uh, prizes. There are two types of leagues. This one I'm looking at here now is um, what we call a fixed deck league. And the cool thing about them is that 
uh, we build the decks for you, you get a bunch of characters to use. In this case, you're actually playing some monsters and everybody in the league uses the same set of decks and, and characters. And it lets us set up some kind of interesting situations and let you play with cards and, and abilities that you might not otherwise experience. And there are constructed leagues as well where you, you bring your own deck as, as usual. So leagues will run for a fixed period of time and during that time you play other people in the league and at the end of the league, uh, depending on how you've scored, you'll um, win some cool prizes. So uh, here, for example, is a detailed description of this particular league with a, a board that, that will be used for it and a list of all the prizes. So you can win gold, pizza, you can win chests, you can even win um, figures that are not otherwise available. So um, leagues, are, we think, are, are a lot of fun and we're looking forward to creating a whole bunch of interesting scenarios and, and playing them. So um, in any in event, that's a, a, a brief overview of Attack of the Artifacts. Uh, all of the content, uh, the, the new chests, um, the new figures are all available for purchase within the game using pizza or if you like. Um, we've put together a bundle, which is kind of similar to the basic edition you might have seen, and it includes um, uh, all of the um, adventures. One of the adventures is free. The other five cost a pizza, or you can get them in this bundle. Uh, the bundle also contains a, a month of club membership, which gives you the extra items whenever you open a chest. It contains all nine of the new Aztec-themed figures and three magnificent artifact chests which are guaranteed to contain a rare item from the expansion set and uh, that will be available for $15 once we release which, speaking of which we will be releasing very soon sometime this month we don't have an exact date yet but so definitely in the next couple of weeks and um, stay tuned for more previews where I'm going to play through some of the content and show you some of the new cards in more detail and how the leagues work um, and in the first week after we launch, uh, you'll get a free artifact chest which contains an artifact item just for logging on every day during that week. And also we'll be running a bunch of free leagues. So we'll let you know um, on our website, on our forums, on our Twitter feed, and also through email if you've um, subscribed uh, when the expansion launches. And um, we look forward to seeing you online and um, showing you a bit more as we um, roll out some more previews. Thanks.